Hello there, my fellow guardsmen, and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer Humor. This is a series where we take some either explored or brand new lore topics of Warhammer and mix it with a bit of humor to hopefully improve your day. This time we're gonna talk about one of the most famous planets in the Imperium, none other than Cadia. And we're just gonna talk about the Cadia of old, so to speak. I'm not gonna focus on what happened to it, at least not in this video. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? If there is one word which can sum up the entirety of the world of Cadia, it is Fortress. Since this place is so close to those nice boys from across the street in the Eye of Terror, Cadia has always required to be on an active defense. All the time, one had their last gun shouldered and was twitching from a combination of going 47 hours without sleep and being raised to be as paranoid as hell. Of course, since they sort of live in the Eye of Terror, this is not paranoia at all, it is just common sense. As far as geography goes, Cadia used to have a temperate climate, similar to the Holy Throne World of Terra. 70% was covered in bodies of water, and the land masses were covered in the bodies of guardsmen. If it weren't for the anti-warp pylons holding back the expansion of the Eye of Terror, it would have been subjected to exterminatus a long time before Abaddon crashed a mighty Blackstone Fortress into it. The place was a hellhole even before it was destroyed. It might have been a good vacation spot if you liked trenches filled with bodies and tracer fire lighting up your hotel room. Or maybe not. And when we do use the word fortress, we do mean fortress. The entire planet is literally designed from the ground up to be impossible to invade. First and foremost, you have miles and miles of trenches, machine gun bunkers, pillboxes, field guns, and howitzers to dig through. And that is only the outer defenses. After that, you have oh so casual heavy artillery stationed on enormous walls, with plenty of snipers, riflemen, throwing anything from macro weapons and grenades to rocks and hot water at you as you attempt to invade. Now, after all of this, after losing half your army, at least, you manage to siege the walls and get inside, you will enter a labyrinth of streets and corridors, each one designed to maximize the advantage of the defending Cadians. Meaning that the only way to advance up the street safely is to essentially breach and clear every single building, which are in turn built to function as small pillboxes. And you gotta do this one room at a time. Assuming you do clear the ground floors with less than 100% casualties, you then repeat this task all day long, and then another week, and another week, until you realize you took a wrong turn and the enemy surrounded you because they have a map and you don't. While trying to delay your doom, more snipers are on the top of the buildings shooting down at you, until you finally turn around that corner and are cut down by a group of kids who decided to kill you because it was a recreational activity for the Imperial Guard scouts. Oh, and by the way, this is only just a minor district of a small city. You really need luck on your side if you're attacking a big city, because they will have all of the above multiplied by 10. Cadia might be the only world in the galaxy where the recruitment rate and the birth rate are synonymous. And if you see how many men and women die on the battlefields every day, you better want to start doing your part for the Imperium as well. On Cadia, you are actually encouraged to have your partner push out your kid in a barracks to simply increase the efficiency in training. Interestingly, military service is not mandatory on Cadia. It is simply what everyone else does. They also don't use the famous Vitae Womb, which is used by the Kriegans, although one could say they would probably need it. As you might have already noticed, Cadia's only real export are soldiers. In that way, they are pretty similar to Catacan. The thing is, on Cadia, is that they pump out so many soldiers that they usually form the core of amalgamated units which then get clumped into new Imperial Guard armies and they are sent to wage campaigns against taken or occupied worlds. 
These armies are almost never sent back home. And, when they win, they are intended to form a new government and society and settle down. The core of these units is usually Cadian, with a lot of army doctrine and styles ended up being Cadian, at least for a millennia or so. These types of units are even sent to colonize empty planets in dangerous sectors of space. Even now, who knows how many planets that are distinct and vital started this very way. Your own DNA as a Cadian can be spread far and wide across the galaxy and you wouldn't even know it. From a more pragmatic point of view, we kinda just know that this is the way it is, because Games Workshop doesn't really want to do any extra work on the Guardsmen. Another interesting trait of the Cadians are their violet eyes. If you ever wanted a more unusual eye color, you can definitely move to Cadia and your kids will likely have glowing purple or violet eyes. This may also tend to explain why purple-eyed anime characters tend to be so awesome. They must be from Cadia. It can also be a lot of fun to explain to mobs of angry locals on another planet on how you're not a mutant because of your eye color, or at least before they crucify you and burn you alive. On the bright side, on another planet, the locals may automatically assume your eyes are that color because you have the Emperor's divine light. Neither here nor there, this seems to be a result of living close to the Eye of Terror, as the original human settlers were completely wiped out by the word bearers during the Great Crusade, and the trait popped up again when the planet was resettled. And speaking of the word bearers, while the Imperium would definitely consider this quality as the highest kind of heresy, it would also explain why it is considered in some ways the birthplace of the Horus heresy. That is because on Cadia, the forces of the word bearers met with Ingefel the Chosen, and they were inducted in the service of the ruinous powers. As such, Cadia has significant importance and sentimental value for many champions of chaos. Despite what is said about how much of a hellhole Cadia is, or was, due to constant warfare, because of that self-same constant warfare, Cadia was one of the most well-defended worlds in the Imperium. In fact, many say it was the second most well-defended world in the Imperium after Terra itself. All the cities are arranged in interlocking blocks that require roads to snake around the buildings with blind corners and are defended by rockrete and adamantium walls, all to favor the defenders in urban battle. Massive shield generators keep the city safe from all but the heaviest of bombardment, forcing the enemies to pay for them meter by bloody meter. All the, air tags, civilians on Cadia are actually military reservists, and they have been through the same lifelong military training that all the Cadians are subject to. As dangerous as Cadia is, the locals did learn to handle that danger and weather it as best as they can. Given its strategic importance, the Imperium was more than willing to commit substantial resources to the planet's defense, which meant a lot of ships patrolling the system and a lot of depots in nearby systems to quickly reinforce Cadia at a moment's notice. But why does living on Cadia suck so much? Well, you're gonna find out more about that in these fun facts. You will be drafted before you can walk, you will learn to shoot before you can count, and you're gonna get thrown in a meat grinder, sometimes figuratively, sometimes literally, before the age of 16. There's always marauding bands of Chaos Space Marines and all flavors of heretics trying to kill you. Random wars of greenskins are trying to kill you. Stealthy units of space elves are trying to kill you. Your own superior officers are, sometimes, trying to kill you. You will get no privacy whatsoever for your entire life. You will be in constant fear of death before reaching puberty. You will be in constant fear of death during puberty. You will be in constant fear of death after puberty. But there are chances you will die before this and then have your soul claimed by a chaos god, and for their amusement you will spend your entire afterlife in constant fear of puberty. There is never any time to mess around, you are perpetually on duty. Sometimes that duty is to help train new recruits for their inevitable death. 
The top fashions in Cadia are camo patterns and body armor. And those are the only top fashions you're ever gonna have to worry about. When you think about it, this is not a bad thing. There's a dozen heretical cults popping up every other week. There are voices telling you to ditch the duty and relax, let loose and call in sick, or simply try something different. You must ignore them. The only thing that the planet sells is soldiers. There's mutants popping up anywhere and everywhere, and they all want to try out their new pincer claw on your neck. Even after you die, Cadia does not stop being shitty. Because once the engraving on your tombstone becomes illegible, it means you've been dead for so long that nobody cares about you anymore. And so your corpse is dug up and burned, while a new corpse is thrown into your hole instead. And then they will be dug up and thrown away as well. Nowadays, Cadia is destroyed and consumed by the Eye of Terror. If you are still living there, you're either a heretic, a warp entity, fighting to the last breath, or really, really unlucky. On the bright side, you can ignore all that, because due to the Chaos armies largely moving on from Cadia, the Imperial Guard forces that survived made it to secure fortifications, rallied, and retook the planet after it was destroyed. If that doesn't convince you that the Guard are the manliest of the manly, then nothing will. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the world of Cadia, and why it was so famous and a hellhole at the same time for today. Now, this episode was obviously made for humorous purposes, so you shouldn't take most of what was said here too seriously. I haven't covered Cadia in my regular lore episodes yet, but hopefully I will get to it someday. Either as an individual video or as part of a series on the Gathering Storm event. But what are your thoughts on the fortress world of Cadia? Are you a fan of this place and its 100% militarization? What do you like or dislike most about it? Do share any thoughts or questions if you have any in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you all an awesome and healthy day. The Emperor protects.